Lord Saints. Praise yeah, um, this week uh, I've been reading some stuff and some old stuff that that we have that we have read before. And this I think you know will help somebody this morning. And I'm starting at uh, Colossian chapter three. One, go all the way down if you want to read it in your spirit time. And I was looking at this all week. I mean, this thing had me sit down and look at it real good. What God is saying. What the Holy Ghost is speaking to us. And this is to my uh, uh, a brother here. This fit you. <laughs> it says, Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeing King, the things above Amen. where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. What hit me is keep seeking. God never says stop seeking. He said keep seeking. We got to keep seeking, saints. Keep, seek, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind. That's another thing that hit me. I got to set my mind. As I woke up this morning, I got I had to set my mind on God. I had to set my mind on the righteousness of God. Amen. The thing that pleased God. The thing that I, at the right hand of, of Christ. Amen. Set your mind. We got to set our mind like he did. He set his mind. He had a wrestling match. But his mind, he was purposely setting his mind. Every time there was a little twist, he was setting his mind. Right over right? He was setting his mind. Everything that uh, negative, he set his mind. So he had to keep on setting his mind. Set until the click, 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 the lock in. And, when it, and then I went lock in. He, he moved. Yeah. And God will be set your mind. Amen. Amen. So you set in the mind is, is a major thing, Doc. We Amen. must set our mind on things right. above. Because right. there's nothing on earth to set your mind on. Right. Right. All is in this earth is lust and pride. Yeah. There's nothing on earth to set our mind on. But there's something in God to set our mind hand on. Some strong stuff. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ. In God. What a blessing that is. Mm -hmm. I don't need to worry about what this world thinks about me. Because mm -hmm. right. my life is already hidden it's in right. Christ. It's in Christ. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to worry myself. Of sickness. Affliction. Or any other thing that come along. Amen. My life is already hidden. Mm -hmm. All I got to do is set my mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 When Christ who. Is our life. When Christ who is our life. Man. God, I thank God for that. Christ yeah. is my life. And in my live yes. and move and walk and have my being right now. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice. Yeah. I'll be glad in it. Yeah. This is a brand new day. I've never yeah. seen this day before. Yeah. I've never seen this day before. Right. It's a Sunday, but I've never seen it this Sunday. Right. But I'm going to set my mind on this Sunday. Because right. God has a blessing for me on this day. Yes. He promised to hold my hand yes. and go out, guide my feet. He Amen. promised to be a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Amen. I'm going to set my mind. My mind has to be set. Amen? Amen? When Christ who is our life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Thank God for that. Amen. Therefore, consider the member of your earthly body as dead. That's one of our problems too. We think this flesh is alive. But if we would speak to ourselves. This is a dead body. Right. I've never seen somebody dead get up and walk around. Mm -hmm. right. If you slap a dead a person in the face. They're not going to slap you back. Yeah. Is it possible? They're not going to slap you back. <laughs> so we're going to be dead to this world just like that. Right. The world slap us around and have all this mess going on. We're going to be dead to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Dead to it. Because our heart and mind is set on God. Yeah. 
Amen. Dead. Therefore, consider. consider the member of your earthly body as dead to what? Immorality. Immorality. Mm -hmm. The works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. right. We gotta consider it, man. Dead. I'm dead, but alive in Christ. Amen. Impurity, passion, evil desire, greed, which amount to idolatry. This is where the devil works. The Bible said the devil worketh in the children of disobedience. Mm -hmm. When we disobey God, we are having our life set up for idolatry. God hates idolatry. Yes. Dangerous, my brothers and sisters. Idolatry. Mm -hmm. For it is because of these things, the wrath of God will come upon the sons of disobedience. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Saints, if we don't set our mind on God, we're going to disobey God. Right. That means we must set the mind. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's what God has given us. Amen. We can't not forget that. That's our blessing. Amen. That's our healing. That's our deliverance. Amen. 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 Saints, I hope I've said something to help somebody this morning. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. There's a whole lot more to read, but I'm going to let you. Let Pastor <laughs> say. So, I feel like the example you bring up with Egypt and the children of Israel coming out of Egyptian bondage is a perfect example of what's already been described by many different people in the service this morning. We're all kind of referring to the same dynamic, starting with what you brought up um, with your testimony, how God was able to work through you yesterday. Um, two, two different mindsets, mm -hmm. right? Because you're referring here at the end to the spiritual mind versus as opposed to the carnal mind. Mm -hmm. And how the carnal mind is always so focused on the tangible, the here, the now. Mm -hmm. And that the spiritual mind is focused on what's more important than mm -hmm. what's, what's here. More treasures which are laid up for us in heaven, which can be accessed and manifested in the here and now. Mm -hmm. But the only way to get those manifested is to, there's got to be a transition from the carnal mind to the spiritual mind. All right. So when you talk about Egypt, um, you alluded to you didn't use this this terminology, but man, the the victim mindset, mm -hmm. right? You see it perfectly manifested in when when a person is bound by fear and anxiety and worry and all they've ever known is oppression and. The enemy using that fear and that, that oppression to keep them bound and keep them focused on what they don't have or what's going to happen that's bad. and um, you, It manifests in so many different ways. So they have this victim mentality because like you're saying, God brings them out, shows them all these miracles, provides for them daily, light uh, at night, warmth at night in the pillar of fire, uh, guiding in, in the daytime, pillar of cloud. He, he, he gives them everything they need, mm -hmm. right? Yet in the midst of all of that miraculous power and having access to it and seeing it play out, they're still full of fear. Right? Because they're talking about, well, what's going to happen? Who, what's the next army that's going to come and conquer us out here? And, and are we going to starve to death? And are we going to, are we going to run out of water? And there's just constant mumbling and complaining. That is the epitome of the process by which God tries to bring all of us out of that victim mindset of, of fear and worry and stress. And, and you're describing it in your, in your personal life this week because you're thinking of, of the old Devin, right? Who, who is overcome by certain things and temptations and trials. And the enemy wants to keep you focused on that, envisioning that Devin so that the cycle perpetuates itself over and over. And it, it'll, it'll literally keep you in bondage. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? When you think on that and you dwell on that. But when you come to the realization that there is another reality, right? right that is rooted in the spirit realm. 
And if I by faith can access that reality that God has prepared for me in the spirit realm, I can manifest that reality in the natural realm. Right. Yes, and, and but it takes that transition from that ch changing of mindsets. Right. So I, I kind of trying to tie in everything everybody said today to go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It's, it's something that's been on my heart uh, for a couple of weeks now, and it's along these same lines discussing this same dynamic that the Spirit has been dealing with all of us, a lot of us, right. this week apparently. So watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting with verse Verse 1, now I, Paul, myself, urge you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, I who am meek when face to face with you, but bold towards you when absent. Man, there's, there's such a deep dynamic, but if I get on that, I won't ever get to where I really need to get from this service. I ask that when I'm present, I need not be bold with the confidence with which I propose to be courageous against some who regard us as if we walked according to the flesh. Right? We just talked about a different reality that's in the spirit realm that I can manifest in the natural realm. Right. If you walk according to the flesh, there's many different ways to describe it. Carnal mind, walking according to the flesh. There's many different ways that the New Testament describes that. But it's referring to the same dynamic, that carnal mindset. Right. You, Paul's saying, you regard me as if I'm walking in the flesh. But I'm tapped into a completely different reality than you are. Mm -hmm. Right? Watch this. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Right. I think when, you, when you describe the situation yesterday, you're ministering to somebody and then another character comes up and begins to try to run some interference. Right? So that the Word of God doesn't reach the seed is not planted in the heart of the person you minister to. There's a spiritual dynamic going on there that you recognize and so you take authority over it. Well, anybody standing around in their carnal mind thinks, man, Devin is rude. Mm -hmm. Right? But we're not warring after the flesh. Right. They don't even realize that there is a spiritual dynamic at play. They have no idea that there's a spirit inside that person or moving on that person that's trying to hinder the gospel from being shared with with a third party. So you take authority over that and, in, and instead of it being a fight, it just, the Spirit has to obey the authority that is given to us by Christ. Exactly. Right? So, man, people talk about casting out demons and they get all excited about that. And, and remember when Jesus sent the, the apostles out and he said, and they said, even the demons are subject to us. And Jesus said, don't rejoice that the demons are subject to you. Rejoice that your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. Like what Jesus is essentially saying is casting out demons is not the, the issue here. That's a side, that's a side show. That's easy work. Right? Yeah. That's easy. Dealing with demons is easy work. To, to an authority spirit, uh, an authority given spirit filled Christian, that there's no boom, it's done, right? There's, it, it really is when you understand your authority in Christ. All right, so you dealt with the spirit, and then you went on and you you, you ministered, and and that is to me is kind of what's going on in this verse. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Right. So you're manifesting that. For the weapons of... i got to move on. I could say so much, but I'm, gonna move, I'm trying to get to a certain point. The weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, right. but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Okay? King James says strongholds. Fortresses, strongholds. Picture a castle or a fort with high wall, high concrete walls, brick walls that an enemy would hide inside of a fortress and, and the attacking army would have to do something, have to deal with the walls, scale them, tear them down, burn them down. They'd have to deal with the walls before they could overcome the, the army that was inside. Right. So I think that's a that's a point that I feel like a lot of Christians don't understand. They don't understand the difference between a, an evil and unclean spirit and a stronghold. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you 
to give you an example, if you go out and, and you know that somebody is possessed with demons and you minister to them and you cast those demons out, um, even if we're not talking about actual possession, if we're talking about somebody is oppressed, well, you can pray and drive those spirits away from that person long enough for them to get relief, to have a clear mind, to be able to seek God in that moment. If they don't take that opportunity, those spirits are coming right back to, to because they have a home there. Those spirits literally have a house. They have a fortress. They have a stronghold in that person's mind. Well, that stronghold is the way a person thinks. But there is a difference between spirits and strongholds. It is not enough for us to cast out spirits right. alone. Right. Okay, let me, let me, if we're talking about evangelism, let me make it closer to home, right? Mm -hmm. So we can practically apply this in our own lives. Mm -hmm. If you have a spirit that is constantly spirit of anger, lust, greed, bitterness, unforgiveness, whatever the enemy is constantly reminding you, wanting you to feel and experience and manifest those things. Many times Christians pray and they drive those spirits away temporarily, mm -hmm. but they never deal with the fortress. Right. It's like evicting a spirit Right? And driving it away through prayer in one heated moment of, I take authority over you and I command you to leave from my mind, from lying to my mind, so on and so forth. But they, they don't ever do anything to tear the fortress down. Mm -hmm. Right. Jesus talks about it's possible to cast out an evil spirit and the evil spirit will wander around in a dry place and he's going to come back with seven spirits worse than himself. Sure. And they're going to take up residence in the same place. Well, why did they come back and it got worse? Because the spirit was dealt with. The spirit was light work. Right. The real work is dealing with the stronghold. Amen. The system of thinking. The way of thinking. Right? So to use Brother Devin's example, it, the, the spirit, like he asked about uh, doubt, fear, anxiety, worry. How many of us had had those seeds planted in our hearts and our minds through the enemy? Well, and, and just about everybody raised their point, uh, raised their hand at at least one of those points, right? Mm -hmm. So the enemy is constantly trying to bombard our minds. But the only reason he has access, the only reason it works on us, is because there's a stronghold, i.e., a way of thinking, a pattern of thinking. Mm -hmm. that we have not yet dealt with. And that's because that's, that's why we pray it away for two or three days. And then we end up falling back into the same habits, same patterns. And the, the, that, that spirit comes back and has... We, we never see total deliverance. Because we drive the spirits away through prayer, but after the course of time, they, they still got a home there. Mm -hmm. They're comfortable. Your mindset, your attitude, the way you think about certain things allows those spirits a place to come back in, set shop up, and become even stronger over the course of time. Makes sense. Right? So there's a difference between dealing with spirits and dealing with strongholds. Okay? We can deal with spirits through, through prayer and casting them out. Light work. That's the easy part. Dealing with strongholds, though, mm -hmm. is not just about prayer. Right. Dealing with strongholds is about change right. within the person. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? How many of you know how hard it is to change? <laughs> All right. So once you set habits and patterns and opinions and ways of thinking in your mind, and you, you've lived your life with these for years and years and years, and to tear that down, to remodel, it takes, it takes work. It takes time sometimes. It takes processing these things. Um, but that's why the Scriptures teach that we must be transformed Right. By the renewing of our minds, Amen. right? Transformation, true permanent change cannot take place until the mind has been dealt with and changed. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. Right. 
How many of you have ever ministered to somebody in the past in the context of evangelism, maybe a family member, a friend, and you sowed seeds and, and they were moved? In that moment, you felt they felt the conviction. They felt the power of God. They moved. They even got baptized. Some of them even prayed. Some of them may have spoken in tongues. And then three, four weeks, three, four months, they fall away. That's right. Right? That's right. Because... Even though the spirits were driven away, the stronghold, the way of thinking still, still remained in their life. Their life was not truly transformed. It was transfigured for a little while, but it was not transformed. There's a difference between transformation and transfiguration. To transfigure something means you just change the appearance of it. Mm. To transform something means that you change everything about it from the inside out. It is completely changed in every element of its being and its existence. <laughs> so, so much of what happens in religion religion and Christianity is there's a lot of transfiguration but there's not a lot of transformation Amen. because it's easy to deal with spirits it's difficult to deal with self yeah. right. Right. Yes. it's difficult to deal with my patterns and habits of thinking like if I, if I have just been a person of fear for so long I, I can drive away the spirit of fear but if I don't change how I think about life, then I'll, that spirit's going to come back and have a place in me and can reside in me and I'll deal with that thing over and over and over and over and over. And it gets harder and more difficult the longer that process goes. It mo it's more ingrained, more entrenched. So that's why the scriptures talk so much about how we've got to change our thoughts. People just want to pray a prayer. And act like that's all I need to do is I just pray a prayer. You can pray a prayer, but you got to change some things. Right? Yeah. right? Yeah. We, talked, we talked a little bit about this last week. Christ took up his cross and his cross dealt with the sin of all humanity. But then he invited us to take up our cross. And what did he say? You take up your cross, deny yourself and follow me. Right? And if you don't do that, you're not, you can't. Be my disciple. Right? right? So Christ is, is saying, I've dealt with the sin issue. Now you've got to deal with the self issue. Yeah. Christ is not going to deal with yourself. That's right. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to change your mind. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Amen. right? Yeah. Christ teaches us what to think. Mm -hmm. Through his teachings, through the scriptures, through the words, through our conscience, through our intuition. The, the spirit of God is constantly speaking to us. Think this. Be a person of faith. Be a person of, of power. Be a person of authority. The same dynamic that, that Devin is describing going on within himself this week. The spirit is speaking to all of us in that way. Right? right? The spirit is teaching us what we need to think. The problem is, is we have thought so long. The other way that we just default go back to thinking that we don't deal with the thought like, OK, I want to make this practical and I don't want to belabor the point. If we drive away those evil spirits, that's good. We have the authority to do that. But the next thing I need to start working on, whether it's me personally or it's the person I'm ministering to. It's not enough to drive spirits away. Then we got to start dealing with thoughts and thought life and thought habits and thought patterns. And we got to change what that person, we think about ourselves and what that person thinks about themselves. So when we're talking about ministering to other people, there's prayer over them. There's driving out the spirit. But that's why discipleship is so vitally important. We cannot leave that person on their own with a stronghold still in place in their life and expect that they're going to... Somehow just make it. That's right. That's what Jesus told us. Go and make disciples. He didn't say go and pray people through to the Holy Ghost. Make them. The, the ultimate goal is make disciples because he knows we can deal with the spirits easily. The most the most difficult part of this equation is teaching people to think differently. Right. 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 So and therein is the difference between. Spirits and strongholds. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to read this again, having explained that a little bit. Verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but the weapons that we have are divinely powerful 
for the destruction of fortresses. The power that God has given us is not just for dispelling spirits. The power that He's given us is to destroy strongholds so that the spirit can never come back again. Right. Ultimate defeat. Right. Mm -hmm. not, not you won the battle today, but you, you lose the war tomorrow. Right. He's saying you win the war by driving out spirits and destroying strongholds. That's how you win the war. That's how a person is transformed. Mm -hmm. Not just transfigured. Right? right? By the renewing of their mind, right? So, for the weapons of our warfare are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Now, notice this, verse 5. What are we destroying? All right, we're, we're destroying evil spirits of this spirit and that spirit and any name, any spirit you want in there. He doesn't say anything about spirits here. Things you get mind. Right? He's going to the root of the problem. Right. The only reason that spirit had a place in your life anyway is because you build a fortress for it. That's right. Mm -hmm. You build a home for him by the way you think. Right. <laughs> and he just moved in and set his furniture up in the place and made himself at home. But you are the landlord. You created the house. You built the house. You own the house. You just allowed that spirit to deposit his thoughts every day. And now it's, it's building stronger and strong brick here, brick there. But at some point, you've got to arise. And it's not just about driving the spirit out. It's about tearing the stronghold down. I've got to change how I think. So if, I, if I'm thinking of myself as a, somebody who's constantly giving in to temptation and lust and bitterness and forgiveness. Now Devin described the answer to that. He said he sat back and he envisioned himself. Instead of envisioning himself as that defeated victim, he envisioned himself as an, an empowered overcomer. Right? Yes. Uh, the scriptures teach us that God has made us more than conquerors. Right. That we overcome by Him and His power in us and through us. So we are overcomers. So when you start thinking of yourself as an overcomer, what are you going to do? You've, you've not, when you think of yourself as an overcomer, you've not just driven out the spirit, you've destroyed the stronghold. You, you've torn the fortress down brick by brick because that's where the enemy was getting places. You thought you were defeated. You'd always had been defeated. Right. So that's just your pattern, your habit. I just give in. But when you start by faith, I am not defeated. Read through Romans 8. We may be perplexed, but we're not distressed. Right. right? He goes through that whole list and says, these are the thoughts that you're facing. But we overcome them by the love of God. Right? Because of the love of God, He has, has the power to change us. So, it is not enough to drive spirits out. We got to deal with strongholds in ourself and in those that we're ministering to. Right? So, Teaching is one of the great, he talks about for the weapons of our warfare. Most people don't think of teaching as a weapon, mm -hmm. but it is one of the most powerful weapons that there is. Because when you teach somebody the principles of the kingdom of God, you are tearing strongholds down and you're building up a place for God to dwell. Right? We are the temple of God. We are the dwelling place of the Spirit of God. So no longer are we a fortress for the enemy. Now we're a fortress filled with the power of God. And if God is for us, Amen. who can stand against us? God is living in the fortress now. Amen. Right? That's powerful. That is so powerful. That is the key to transformation is that renewing, that level of renewing the mind. So the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations, speculations, Every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge, knowledge, or speculation, knowledge, and we are taking every thought, thought captive to the obedience of Christ. He didn't say a thing in the world about the Spirit in that verse. Why? Because Paul knows the spirit is not the problem. Right. Right. The stronghold is the problem. Yeah. If I can deal with the stronghold, the spirit has no place to dwell. Right. Right? right? The spirit can be easily driven out by prayer. 
Sure. Yes. The stronghold is the issue. Mm -hmm. So what I've got to be dealing with now is knowing that as a Christian, every spirit, I have authority over every evil and unclean spirit because Christ has given me His authority. Right? right? But my work isn't finished yeah. when I pray off a of spirit. I got to teach myself or I've got to teach my family or I got to teach my friends to destroy ungodly mentalities and patterns and habits of thinking and replace those with what the scriptures teach me I am and should be in God. Yes. Right? And Devin talking about envisioning himself. That's that that's practical application of these principles that we're talking about. You refuse to think of yourself as the defeated victim anymore, but you envision and you meditate and you see yourself operating in the power of God, walking in faith, overcoming whatever comes against you. And you are literally, in thinking that, you are literally prophesying that over your own life. Because you will become... As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Right. Amen. If I think I'm defeated, I am going to be defeated. If I think I am an overcomer, then I will be an overcomer. That is dealing with the fortress. That is dealing with the stronghold. That's tearing down the bricks of the old Devon. And it's building up the fortress of God who is the new Devon. Right. Yes. And then we're asking God, God, fill this new temple. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. Fill me full. Hallelujah. Right. Root out of me anything that is unclean or unrighteous or unholy. Yes. Purge me with hyssop, David wrote, and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Constantly removing and cleansing myself. Because even after I build up the fortress of God, the enemy doesn't quit. No. Because you, you've won today. That won't be the last time that the enemy ever comes to Brother, Brother Devin with issues. The enemy will do everything he can to try to rebuild that fortress that is being torn down. But, so we've got to be diligent, consistent, perpetual to continually build up the division. The, the, the division against the enemy. Alright, verse 6. And we are ready to punish all disobedience. Whenever your obedience is complete. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. That verse right there describes once somebody has truly been transformed by the renewing of their mind. There's not a, we're not talking about a Christian transfiguration. We're talking about a Christian transformation. Everything about them has been dealt with. Have you ever noticed when somebody has that change that like... They, they're literally, that maybe people have said this about you in the past. You're just literally not even the same person. Yeah. You're so different. You don't like the, the things you used to like. You don't go the places you used to go. You don't say the things that you used to say. They're just such a change within you. That's because the stronghold, not the spirit was driven away. Spirit was driven away, but the stronghold, more importantly, was torn down and a new fortress, a new temple was built for God's spirit to reside in. There was a permanent and total transformation that took place. Now, you're, now that your disobedience in the past, you realize man, I was so disobedient to God. I don't want to live in that disobedience anymore. That person who is truly transformed is aggressive at revenging their disobedience. Right. I did wrong for so long, now I'm going to be passionate to do everything right, right. from this day forward. I'm literally going to revenge my disobedience. Right. That is the, that's the fruit, that's the manifestation of a person who has not only driven out spirits, but torn down strongholds, right. rebuilt a temple of God, and now God is, is dwelling inside of them. It, that, that person now just revenges every disobedient thing they ever did, now with, with right. constant and perpetual obedience. Right. That's, man, what Paul describes here is so powerful. Amen. Right? I... I just been so frustrated in the past in dealing with people where you pray and it, you drive a spirit away. Light work. There's nothing to that. That's right. But then that person won't change the way they think. Exactly. And so that thing comes back again right. and it gets worse and it gets entrenched. Right. And, and man. I, it, not for one thing. Being all things, yeah. Because once you overcome one stronghold, there's another stronghold somewhere in your mind, that, and it's, you're constantly you become a stronghold hunter. 
after a ride, right? You're looking for everything that happens in your life. It's like, man, why did I feel so just way about that that just happened? Why did that bother me so bad? Red flag, there's a stronghold somewhere, somewhere here that's not yet being dealt with. And, and that's just God shining light on the cockroaches, letting you know, drive them out, tear down their nest, tear down the stronghold. And then the, the, the purpose of all of this is so that we can rebuild something godly in its place, right? We are the temple of strengthened, um, that, that God is desiring to build a, a, we be a dwelling place to rebuild a temple instead of a fortress, right? And so if we're not constantly building that, then we're, the enemy's working against us. It's, it's like we're sitting back waiting for the enemy instead of just purposing in our mind, I'm going to build myself up in my most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's Letting right. the Spirit lead me as I pray, pray, revealing to me what needs to change, what I, how I need to change my thoughts, my habits, my patterns, mm -hmm. so that I'm working. I, now I'm on the offensive, right? Instead of just defensive, now I'm on the uh, offensive. You're empowered when you're on the offense. Right. You're a victim when you're on the defense. Yeah. Right? So that, that's the difference, I, I think, in a lot of that, that mentality, too, is go on the offense. Build something out of your life for God. Like the home inspector thing, we pay somebody to come in and do that because that service is so valuable to us. It's a small fee. If you're talking about sending in a home inspector for whatever they charge, $500, and they find a damage that down the road would cost you 20000 yeah. to fix. Yeah. You, that's just a drop in the bucket. And we're willing, we want to pay that for that process. But when it comes to our spiritual lives, we want to hide everything. Right. We don't want anybody to know what's going on in our closets and our basements and mm. our attics. And, but if we open ourselves up to the body of Christ, that's what the, the apostles are teaching when they say, confess your faults to one another that you might be healed. Let somebody in to help you fix issues that you may not be capable of fixing yourself. I think that's a beautiful point that you bring up, Shirley. Thank you. Yeah. We lie to ourselves yeah. a lot of times because we get tired of working. We get tired of being diligent and tearing down and building up. And we just would rather not know that there's an issue there. So we will literally lie to ourselves. But if we, if we are truly in prayer, God's not. there is no lies in God. Mm -hmm. there, it's only truth when you're That's dealing right. with God. Right. And He will constantly be dealing with it. That's why a lot of people don't pray. That's right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Honest talk. Because when they go to prayer, the Spirit is speaking conscience. Conscience, don't do this. What about this? Why are you not fixing this? And so instead of hearing that, they'd rather just lie to themselves and think everything's okay. So I'm just going over here and not pray as much. <laughs> These are not conscious decisions that we right. make, but they are subconscious decisions that we make. Right. Right. Yeah. right. No. Yeah. God is always, oh, yeah. tell, Why people God is always telling Felt. me this or he's always telling me that. I think I'm not praying a lot. I want to hear that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> That's why, that's why people with that mindset who are lying to themselves don't want to be around other people mm -hmm. because they know other people who are godly are, are going to point out other things. So they avoid fellowship. They'd rather be isolated, right? And we're literally lying to ourselves in situations like that when God is just trying to perfect us and make us more than conquerors and overcomers. You can't overcome something that you won't even admit that you got an issue with, right? It's still, it's the conqueror. It's conquering you.